Hi, I'm Melissa, and this is The Book Break, and today I am talking to M. Winston Egan, although we will call him Win, about his phenomenal new book, Grandparenting on Purpose. We're going to bring him on in. Hi, Win. Hi, Melissa. So I have to say, when I first saw your book, I just loved it and instantly wanted to get it for all the grandparents I know. I would love to hear how you and your wife, Linda, got started with Grandparenting on Purpose. We're going to bring up the cover image and tell us a little bit more about how you guys decided to, to do this book. Fresh ideas, activities, traditions for connecting with grandchildren near and far. Melissa, the story is an interesting one. We've been in a couples group for probably about 40 years. And one of the couples said, hey, we'd like to have you come to our empty nesters group and talk about what it means to be grandparents. Well, we were excited about the invitation, but we wanted to be fully prepared. And that night, after I'd finished making the presentation, when I arrived home, I said to Linda, I think we have enough for a book. And during the next couple of days, I'm going to mess with a table of contents. And that's how it had its genesis. That's phenomenal. Now you have a big family. How many children and grandchildren do you do you have? Well, we, we have four children. We have a son and three daughters, and we have 22 grandchildren. One of those died in utero, which was oh. quite a challenge for us. But they are, they are really a remarkable group of people. We have uh, five children who've been adopted from Haiti, uh -huh. and they are so much fun, a set of twins, uh, two daughters, and uh, a young Davidson. So it's a That's diverse funny. family, and we now have, uh, I think we have now four married grandchildren. I should be more accurate than that, but we have <laughs> That's married, okay. That's okay. <laughs> we, we have married grandchildren, and it's so much fun to have them join with us in family activities. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of the activities that you talk about in your book, Grandparenting on Purpose. So I love, I think one of my favorite pieces of your book was the Jacob books and some of the other ideas that you give grandparents, the calendars and pictures. Tell us a little bit about that. And for our viewers, this is uh, illustrations from the book. Well, the Jacob book really predated social media. And essentially, this was the genius in my wife. She just was so creative and so sensitive to what our grandchildren needed. So our granddaughter, or our daughter, Mary, Mary Ann said, I have a great idea. We're going to do a Jacob book. It's Grandma and Jake, or Grandma and Maggie. And on a monthly basis, we'll take pictures, and then we'll send the book to you. And obviously, you'll be taking some pictures. So let's just create an ongoing book of yeah. activities and what's happening in the family, what they did, how they liked it. So it really became an interactive book. We would put in our pictures, put in our commentary, and send it to him or to them. And then they would respond the next month and send us a new edition. And the thing I want to stress about this is that this book now is one of his favorites. He's, oh, now yeah. almost, he's now almost 25. And this is a book that's a permanent product. It's something that kind of takes him back to when he was just a little boy and what he was doing and what he was thinking and how he was growing. Yeah. And I love it too, because I think you mentioned something that really hit me, which was this was pre-social media. And I think that because of social media, sometimes we forget the value of physical things, physical pictures and books. And this is one that, like you mentioned, your, your grandchild just loves. And Another thing that you talk about in here are creating traditions. And I love in here you have the Wegan, um, Egan family. See, I just put Wynn and Egan together. <laughs> uh -huh. Family turkey bowl. So I got to show this cute picture here. Tell us a little bit about some of these traditions. The turkey bowl is one of our most favorite traditions. So the day of Thanksgiving, we gather at either a neighbor's home or our home or a close relative. You know, we have fruit, uh, we have bagels, we have donuts. So it starts with hot chocolate, just something that will draw kids together. And then what we do is we go to a nearby junior high or elementary school, get out the cones. And sometimes we've had as many as three 
small football fields. And we play flag football. And everybody has a chance to be whatever they want to be on the team. They can be the center. They can be the quarterback. And we have uh, – he's, he's my nephew. He's an adult with disabilities. And he looks forward to this every year because he has an opportunity to run for two or three touchdowns. He's now in his 40s, and it's just so much fun to see the look on his face after yeah. he runs for a touchdown, puts his hands up, and everybody cheers. And even some of the younger kids get good at looking like they're going to be able to tackle him. And Aww. then he kind of, you know, they purposely miss him. And it just it just brings a lot of love yeah. um, or produces a lot of love among and between our family members. Yeah. And speaking of a lot of love, one of the ideas that you give in your book are birthday letters. And I loved that example because, again, I think sometimes with social media, um, we forget the value of some of those things. And so I would love to show some of these letters that you have examples of in your book. And I'd love to hear just a quick little synopsis from you of what you do with the birthday letters or the letters to spouses and grandchildren. I think that this idea is far and away one of the most popular. Uh, of course, I've shared copies of books uh, of the book with dear friends, and most of them come away and, and say, when I'm going to do these birthday letters. And the birthday letters are really spectacular in this sense, that they're highly personal, which means we talk about, oh, you're now in your last year of high school. You're getting ready to drive a car. And it's evident to me that you have a lot of trust and that your parents really believe in you and count on you to make good decisions. So the, the, the messages that are conveyed in these birthday letters are primarily affirmative. Mm -hmm. And some of them also have to do with counsel. So you might say, you know, when you complete high school, you want to have some certainty about how you want to spend your time and what kind of contributions you want to make. And the other thing that we'll do, we do, I wrote one yesterday, he's 16. And this is someone who in the last two years has started to develop an affinity for climbing, you know, these <laughs> indoor gyms. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I told him, I said, I can't believe how much you've changed. You just look so buff. Um, <laughs> you have guns like nobody else. And, um, I just think it's such a great thing that you're doing and I want to come and see you. So I want you to invite me. And then, you know, we talk about other things that are happening. I'd happened to had a conversation with him about what was happening in his school. And I was so impressed with what he had to say about what were the themes in the school? What were students talking about his friends? Yeah. So I on, love in, that. So in the letter, I, love I that just, it's, Oh, sorry. Well, in the Go letter, ahead. I just, just said, I'm so impressed with your analysis and the way in which you're thinking about people who are diverse or different from you and how you seem to be wanting to move in the direction of equity and treating people fairly. Uh, anyway, the letters are magical. And, and a granddaughter said to me, she said, Grandpa, when I get married, is it possible that you could compile all the letters that you've written to me and put them in a book? And I said, oh, absolutely. And the, and the neat thing about that then is they can go back and see, oh, this is where I was. This is how I was perceived at the time. And this is the advice that I was given. So I think the birthday letters are, are really substantial and, and play a marvelous role in the development of grandchildren. I love it. And just before we wrap up, I want to show the table of contents from your book, because I think that there are some pieces in here that are really important, like the heart of grandparenting on purpose. We've talked about this before when you and I have chatted. And the other thing uh, um, in chapter nine, what do grandchildren want and need? And I think that was so important because I, I'd love to hear from you um, just a real quick synopsis of why is it so important to really focus on what your grandchildren want and need? Well, the premise of the book is this. In order for you to have or to be helpful or supportive of your grandchildren, you have to know them and you have to know their needs. And you have to know that fundamentally, they like you. They like being around you. Uh, they appreciate the kind of person you are. So thus, 
they are, you know, they feel like they can trust you with things that they might want to know about or questions that they have that they want to have answered. So at the heart of grandparenting on purpose is having positive and enduring relationships with your grandchildren and also with those parents. When those are in place, when those deposits have been made, then really fantastic things can happen. So, you know, some of these are things like, uh, we, we call this the family chat, where we can, you know, send out a notification that goes to everyone. We have a college age, you know, family chat. We have adults. We have the teenagers. So when we want to send something to all of them, in fact, today, I actually sent a text to each of my grandchildren, um, and it was tailored to them. And their responses were so much fun. Yeah, that's so uh, I get, great. I can tell they really loved it. I love it. Well, I, I really love your book too. And I would encourage our viewers to check it out, Grandparenting on Purpose. And I just want to show a picture um, really quickly of you and your wife, Linda, who put this book together. And even though Linda passed away before the book was able to be published, I love that you carry this dream forward. And this book just came out a couple of weeks ago, Grandparenting on Purpose. And I just encourage everyone to go and check this book out. It's available on Amazon right now. And thank you so much for being here with me today, Wynn. You're very welcome, Melissa. It's been a pleasure. And thank you all for joining us on the book break. We'll see you next time.